Hi everyone and welcome to our quick video tutorial today on dynamic rates. The dynamic rate feature is an amazing tool to use. It really increases your opportunities to bring in a bit more revenue throughout the year. You can set a minimum price and a maximum price and NewBook will automatically jump the pricing up based on occupancy. So if guests get in quick when you're at a lower occupancy level, they'll pay the cheapest price and then it will gradually start to increase based on the demand of bookings that drop into your NewBook system. There are four key areas that you need to know when it comes to creating rates. The first area in our menu search on the left is our rate types. So these are essentially the names of the different prices that you're actually advertising to your guests and also that your staff can see when they're making a book in. Simply add a rate type in the top, enter a name as an example, best flexible rate. You are also able to place short description info that can flow through to your new book online page. So this might be um, flexible refund options. Underneath that, we then have full description, which is more of an internal um, description to your staff members so they know exactly what's included in this rate as well. The next section we have underneath is the ability to actually restrict this particular rate to user profiles and new books. So management might be the only people that are able to book it and so on and so forth. You also have the ability to restrict specific discounts in here as well. Once you're happy with that, you save. And we've now got our rate type available so we can head into our next section, which is our rate periods. Using my menu search again, I'm going to open up my rate periods page. And this is where we're going to set the dates that our pricing is available throughout the year. As an example, I might have a low season where I charge the cheapest price and I don't have any minimum night stays. But then I also have a mid season where we're semi busy and I charge a little bit more and I have a few weekend night restrictions. And then I have my peak period where, you know, I charge the highest price for my accommodation because I know we're going to be fully booked. So in order to set those, we need to add a rate period for each one. It is important that the dates are back to back and not overlapping with these specific ones. So I'm going to add rate period for my first one. Super simple, we add a name in, as an example, low season, 22. On the right, we place a color in here and that will display on my bookings chart to easily identify when we're crossing over to a new season. We then just add our dates. So my low season this year is from October 1st till the end of October. I also know that I actually have another up and coming low season at the start of 23. So I'm going to add another date in here and this is just going to start on the 1st of February and run until the end of Feb as well. Once I've saved this one, I've now got those dates set, I can create my next rate period. And what I need to do, I need to fill in the blanks in between those dates. So my mid-season starts on the 1st of November and goes till Christmas Eve, so I need to create that next. I can duplicate a rate period quickly at the top, so it just copies the name. All I need to do is sort of update a few details here, such as the name and the color, again, just so it's nice and clear on my bookings chart. I'm then simply going to remove the extra line and I'm going to update the date here to say 1st of November up until the 24th of December is my mid-season. Again, if I wanted to add more dates, I simply add date on the right. Otherwise, I can save. Again, I've got the duplicate rate period where I can say peak. And in this one, again, changing that color and updating this date. So this one is going to flow on from the 24th of December. So it's going to start on the 25th and go all the way till the end of January and simply save. So now I've got all of my date ranges within here. And if I have a quick look at my rate periods page, you'll be able to see them nice and neatly listed here. The third step is where we go to set up our actual rates. So this is where we want to default as much as possible about what is included in that pricing. So what you charge per night, what the deposit rules are for payment, cancellation fees, and so on. So in the menu, I'm heading over to my rates page. This will display a list of any existing rates that you've used previously. To create a new one, simply add rate in the top. It is really important that when we are creating our rates and our rate periods that we have a really specific naming convention. 
As an example, we want all areas to tie together. So when I'm creating my rate name, I want to incorporate that it's my best flexible rate. I want to advise what it's for, so what category of accommodation and potentially what season it's for as well. As an example, I'm going to say best flexible rate for my luxury villa and it's going to be for my low season pricing. Now when it comes to using our dynamic rate functionality, in order to activate this, you need to select from the dynamic rate options. If you'd like your dynamic rates to feed through to your new book online page and potentially your third party booking channel such as booking.com, you'll need to select online and interface. If for any reason you only want them online or only want them within the new book interface, you do have those options as well. So we're going to select online and interface. Once selected, you'll see that the rate base price section reloads and we have these three areas for us to fill in. The first area is our dynamic minimum. So this is as low as we are willing to go with the pricing. As an example, I'm going to place in here $200. Next, we have our dynamic max. So this is the highest price any guest is going to pay. So if they are booking when we have one more luxury villa left, they will most likely be paying the premium amount. So let's say that's $275. Now the last area is really important. It's your dynamic base. And think of this section as the price that you would have charged as a flat rate if you weren't going to use your dynamic rate option. So if I know that I generally would have charged a $200 flat rate, I'm going to place this in here. This area is integral as it is what we use in order to actually calculate how much money you've made by using or implementing your dynamic rate structure. So we have a dynamic rate report that you're able to use. And if this area is not filled out, you're not going to be able to see the increase in revenue that you've bought in. Now that we've set our dynamic rate pricing, on the right, we then have some options as to how you would like NewBook to calculate this pricing. We have our dynamic method. So we have two options, off peak and peak. If you hover over the little toggle here, it'll tell you what sort of scaling they use. So Off-Peak uses a linear scale for price calculation. So that essentially is quite a gradual increase and works in a linear line. Whereas the Peak option is more of an exponential scale for price calculation, which means it stays a bit closer to the baseline initially, and then it peaks a little bit more aggressively towards the end when your occupancy is um, increasing. So there's higher jumps if you use the peak option. Off peak is more gradual and even. We then have our dynamic occupancy calculation. So there are three options here, and this is what tells NewBook which specific occupancy percentage it should be looking at to then base its increases on the dynamic rate. To give you a bit more of an idea, I'm actually gonna preview some of these options so you can get a visual representation of this. So if we click preview dynamic calculation, it allows us to basically test or have a bit of insight into what the pricing will look like if we use these options. So it pulls through our pre-filled details. At the minute, we're going to preview the off-peak method and I'm going to show you the dynamic occupancy at a category level. So when we have that set here, we then need to preview it with a specific category. So because I'm looking at my luxury villas and that's the rate that I'm setting up, I'm going to select this and then preview. So as it's on the off peak, it's on the linear scale. So again, it's got that really steady gradual increase. It's telling us that out of the eight villas that we have available to book, the first one will pay the cheapest price at 200. The last booking that is placed or the eighth villa that is booked will then pay that premium amount at the 275. If you'd like to preview it with the peak option, simply change and then preview you'll see that this is more of a exponential scale. So it's keeping closer to that baseline initially, and then it jumps up a little bit more aggressively. So we can see it stays closer to that base price and minimum, and then it starts increasing towards the end here. If you'd like to have new book increase the rate based off of the category type occupancy total, simply click here, and then you'll need to update the preview option to select the category type that you've got set up with a new book. I've got one called Villas because I have luxury villas and I also have family villas. And what I want NewBook to do is basically, if I've got no bookings in my family villa, 
but I start getting bookings in my luxury villas, I would like the pricing on the family villas to go up anyway because they are essentially the same kind of accommodation type and I really want to yeah, increase the revenue opportunities by using the dynamic rate functionality. So if I preview this, instead of it just looking at my eight luxury villas, it's actually looking at my 22 overall villas that I have in the system. And you'll see the pricing has a larger amount to calculate off. So the increase is going to be a little steadier regardless of whether we do peak or off peak. And again, you can chop and change to preview what the pricing is going to do, but that is another great option. The last one, again, this is instant. So this is just your overall occupancy at your property on any given day. So all total rooms and sites combined. So if we preview that, I actually have 64 and you'll see the pricing. So even if I got a booking in my powered site, my luxury villa, my family villa pricing is going to start jumping up based on how busy the overall business is. Today we're going to stick with category and I'm just going to update the rate to make sure it follows those settings. One last setting that you have as well is a minimum occupancy. So this is a way of restricting when you want Newbook to start bumping that pricing up. So if you want to give guests the opportunity to still pay that cheaper price for a little bit longer, you can pop in here that you want to only start increasing your dynamic rates once your category hits 10% occupancy. So they get the cheaper price for longer. Now that we've set our dynamic rate information here, we can head over to the occupant section where we specify who is actually included in these nightly prices. If it's a combination of any two occupants, you can combine the included occupants and state that any two persons are included in the nightly rate. If you are wanting to place a minimum night stay, you've got your advanced rate options tab and that is where we can select our minimum stay duration and place two within here. Before we save this, we're also going to have a look at our deposit rule section. As mentioned in previous videos, we have a standalone option which allows you to simply add a deposit and set the rules. Alternatively, we do recommend using a booking rule template, which is something you can pre-save and then select from when you're creating your rates. Now that everything has been set correctly, all I'm going to do is save. This now creates our new rate on the dynamic rate structure. Now, if I need to go and create my next dynamic rate for my mid-season because the pricing is going to be slightly different, I can duplicate this, update the name of this one to match the mid-season, and then I'm just going to slightly adjust my pricing here. So my base in mid is generally 210. I don't want to charge anything less than that, and my pricing goes up a little bit further during this mid-period as well. Once I save, I've now got my two rates created for my luxury villas and we can complete our fourth step which is applying the rate. This is what's going to make the rate available for a staff member to start making bookings for guests. So in the bottom right corner of the rate screen we can select add applied rate. It takes us to the add screen where we can start connecting the four areas that we've completed before. So the first one we want to do is our rate type which is going to be best flexible. Our rate is automatically pulled through, so it's connected our mid-season one here for my luxury villa. I'm going to select in my category option, luxury villa, and my rate period is going to be mid-season. Now that those four sections have been set, I can save another, which will save that rate application and allow me to create another. This time, I can keep the rate type as is. The rate I'm going to remove because I would like to do my best flexible rate for my luxury villa in the low season. I keep the category and all I do is remove my mid season and replace it with the low and simply save. Now that my rates are applied, I can head to my rates chart to cross check the work that I've just completed. So once we're on our rates chart, we can see the category of accommodation called luxury villa. I can see my best flexible rate is available. You'll be able to see the date range and when you hover over this, it actually tells you what rate period or season you're in. We can see we're in the low, which is also identified by that pinky purple color as well. 
We can also see an occupancy statistic, which is based on each day. And this is looking at the category occupancy. So at the minute, it's $200 a night at this stage because we have no bookings in the system on the 6th, 7th or 8th. However, you'll notice on the 9th, 10th and 11th, it's actually a little higher. So it's $212 because we've started jumping up in occupancy because there's already some bookings in the system. Next, it goes down again, and then on the Friday, it jumps right up. So it's $262 for the next person to make a booking because we're at that higher occupancy level. Once you start receiving bookings on your dynamic rates, you can then start to use what we call our dynamic pricing report. This is a really great report to see exactly how effective the rates have been, how much more money have you bought into the business compared to last year when you'd had a flat static price. So as an example, if I run the report for a year and I'm just gonna group it by the rates themselves and run this one here, what you'll see is a list of the actual rates in the system. The date range, it actually tells you how many bookings you've bought in. It then gives us two columns. The first one is the rate dynamic base total. So this is what you would have earned if you just kept it on that flat base rate. However, based on our new dynamic rate structure, we've had nine bookings in and we've actually doubled pretty much what we would have um, if we'd kept it on that flat price. And over on the right, you can see that increase here nicely for you. So as you can see, dynamic rates really are a great tool. It's a really effective and efficient and automated way to set and forget your rates and increase that demand and, and the revenue opportunity at your business. If you do have any questions surrounding the dynamic rate setup, be sure to check out our knowledge base for some additional information on how to use this feature. Remember that in the top right corner of every page that you're on, if you click the question mark, it's going to show you relative articles and um, any potential videos associated with that feature. As an example, if I do head back to our rates chart, you'll be able to see here it actually loads articles specific to what the rates chart is, how to do a stop sale, how to add a dynamic rate and so on. So lots of helpful tools there for you. If there's any specific queries that you need answered, you can always reach out to our support team. That does bring us to the end of our video tutorial today. We hope you've enjoyed it and we look forward to seeing you again in the next one.